Is it open? Is it narrow? Open, narrow. It's narrow. It is narrow, yeah. Well, at least the path. Yeah, the path is narrow. And when will it get more open? Once we uh, get here. Very nice. Track the boundaries of those houses. Good job. I'm going to come fast. OK. For eight-year-old Nathan Nip, who has been blind since birth, the world is his playground, not his obstacle. I'll show you when I'm going to hit the sun. That's when I hit the sun. Much of that has to do with his training in echolocation, or clicking, to hear what's around him. Brian Bushway, also blind, is teaching Nathan the technique. Still click and pay attention. Keep track of those buildings. Bushway has been blind since he was 14 years old. Through this period of time, like when I first lost my vision, I, I found myself trapped inside this box of low expectations. No one expected anything of me anymore. They just said, you're blind. Well, you don't do anything. And this was the larger message that society was sending me. And it really caused this internal conflict because I still felt like the same person. I still was the same person and I still had all these same life desires and needs as I ever did before, but now I was labeled blind and put inside this box of low expectations. And it was my life journey to figure out how to get outside of that. Bushway says human echolocation is much like the sonar used by dolphins. That's why some call it flash sonar. As I learned some basic skills, all of a sudden I was no longer stuck on the couch. I was able to go outside and you know par participate with activities with friends. I was able to go to the grocery store, I was able to go uh, to the local malls and travel on buses, and I found myself just you know, being independent once again. Bushway, an instructor for the nonprofit group World Access for the Blind, teaches children and adults to click in combination with their canes. He can easily demonstrate how the sound of sonar bouncing off an object works. Since we're sitting next to each other, it should be pretty good. Just close your eyes and listen. Yeah, yeah. I hear it. World Access for the Blind says it's taught flash sonar echolocation to thousands of people in 40 countries around the world. The cost of the lessons vary. World Access says they base the cost on a family's needs and in some cases will even provide services for free. Critics of the clicking method say it brings undue notice to the blind person. At the Braille Institute of America, the echolocation technique is not taught. Instead, instructors use the cane, guide dogs, and technology to open the world to the blind. Orientation and mobility expert Karen Esquivel Mays with the Braille Institute says while she doesn't specifically teach just flash sonar, she can understand how it's been misunderstood. I can understand where people say it's, it can be a little, you know, distracting because you are clicking your tongue and, and people just don't know. When you started moving faster, you, you started clicking. And why is it important the faster you go to click more? So that you don't bump into anything. Exactly. What were you using? 
keep track of where you were going? Echolocation. Regardless of skeptics, as Nathan's father explains, when you have a child who's blind, you look for any way to help. You never plan on having a handicapped child. The second that happens, everything just falls apart because you realize you don't have enough money. You'll never have enough money to take care of this. You'll never be able to work hard enough to get rid of this. For Nathan, echolocation or flash sonar has become another tool to open the world even wider. What are some of your favorite sounds with echolocation? Since it bounces all around. Where he is, is at home with himself, whether it's riding a bike, A scooter, or playing multiple instruments. Helped by echolocation, there is no challenge too great for Nathan Nip. Something his family once thought impossible is now reality. For Full Frame, this is Sandra Hughes in Irvine, California.